Okay, guys. So let me do a quick recap on what we did till last video. So till last video, we uh, implemented the page object model for the pages which we have. So we for now we were only working on these two pages: common page objects and search page objects. And we implemented two three new things there. Uh, so we implemented a find elements and we iterated this collection. And uh, we also added a method called as after method. This is also called as hook. So this is I'm using for quitting the driver once the test case is completed. And if you notice, we have still have only one test case. I'm not increasing the number of test cases which we are automating. So it, it is still uh, I have only one test case present in my feature file. And we are not going to add more test cases unless our framework is up, you know, ready. So there are still a lot of things which we need to develop in our framework, framework before we start adding more test cases. So this is another principle when you start uh, an automation project. That is, you don't scale the number of test cases in your automation framework. You first develop your framework with the limited number of test cases. And then once your framework is ready, uh, only then you start scaling up your test test cases on top of that framework. So what do I mean by uh, developing the framework? So in the typical framework, what you should have is uh, all the basic fundamentals of a framework. That is, it should have a proper reports. It should be having the capability of capturing screenshots. Uh, it should be having all the reusable methods already defined because once you start developing a test, uh, you start uh, developing new test cases on, on top of it, um, later it would become difficult for you to modify the fundamental structure or basic methods of your framework. So that is the reason I'm still keeping uh, only one test case with me and I am kind of using that test case. I am trying to develop my test, develop my test framework. Uh, in a in a better way in a better direction so what we're going to do today to do that is we are trying to we will be learning hooks cucumber hooks and how will we use that we will do screenshot capturing because that is which is very very important in a in a, in a ui automation framework because that that gives you an evidence that your test case is executed and you also have an evidence that to prove that whatever was executed uh, is uh, is correct. So if someone at a later point of time asks you that, tell me the result of this, then you can actually show. So logs are not enough. Logs should be separate, supported by the screenshots. So screenshot capturing is also very important. And it's also very important, uh, the criteria of the strategy of screenshot capturing. So you should know or you should be defined you should have to you, you you will have to define when you should be taking the screenshots after each step or after each scenario or take only when something fails so there are different screenshot strategies which you can adopt we'll talk about it how you can implement those strategies if need be so we'll talk about that screenshot capturing mechanism then uh, we can also talk about reporting okay because reporting also something which is a very very crucial aspect of a framework because what you execute you will have to demonstrate it to someone so reporting is an end product of your test framework so when you run something your framework should be able to generate a report which is very very readable lucid and understandable to the end customer and customer can be anyone it could be you yourself it could be your colleagues, manual testers. It could be your manager. It could be your client, you know, any stakeholder. Uh, so that reporting part is usually a very, very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, phenomena of your framework without which your framework will always be incomplete. No matter how good your framework is, if your reporting is not good enough, um you, still there would be something which would be missing from your framework right so reporting is uh, what is is of uh, high importance right now we are if you notice we are relying on cucumber default framework sorry cucumber default reports html reports but we are going to understand extend report implementation because extend report is a very is a very good implementation and it generates reports in a very good readable 
uh, attractive HTML reports and that is what we're going to implement right so let's begin so let me do one thing let me remove this from now it will be a syntax error if we keep it here so let me go to our search step devs so what we are missing here right now is is the logs okay so when we run it if you notice when i when i ran it last time let me run it again uh, run as j unit test so when we run it it actually ran and it closed the browser and if i go and see the reports let's say if i go to my target folder and cite this html and here if i right click index open with web browser and it shows me the report okay let me copy it and this is the old report let me go here so basically this is the report what you saw was a cached version i ran it something so it that it that, that was uh, it was displaying but this is what it is so if you notice there is nothing which i see after these steps what if i if i want to publish or log something important some user in some user logs some, something which user wants to be printed in the report right now I, I am not able to do it all it's printing is that this was a given statement this was a when statement this was a when statement this is what got executed that is the only thing which is which it is uh, printing as of now and i'm not satisfied with it so my framework should have this capability to log that specific information some user defined statements in the reports so how we are going to achieve that that is what i'm going to talk about next so to do that we need to understand what these hooks are now these hooks are i think in the last video also we discussed that hooks are something uh, which executes before and after a scenario okay these are called as hooks these this is also present in j unit test test ng in test ng we have many hooks like before suit before test before method before class right but in cucumber we have kind of two major hooks one is before and second is after after i am already using here i am using it for cleanup i am going to use another one and i am going to call it as public setup something which executes before a scenario so i am going to call it as a at the rate before public void it shouldn't return anything before now we i am getting two before j unit and cucumber api and i have to use cucumber api because that is what i am interested in because before each scenario execution this before hook will get executed right so i have written writing here before and let me maybe move these two at the top because they might get easily lost and maybe later on we i'm going to move these to a separate class but for now let's let me keep it here right now these before uh method which i have i would like to use this for a special kind of interface which is defined inside cucumber api this interface is called a scenario s c e n a r i o scenario and i'm going to import this and i will create s c e n a r i o scenario again at the top s c n and call it s c n and i'm going to assign this this s c n is equal to s now if you have noticed or if you have watched my previous videos on the same framework where i was automating api test cases here i also use uh, this scenario object in that api framework so if i could show you that as well where was it i think here so i did something similar to that here as well so this is uh, and you know some more implementation here called as dependency injection it is what i have done here in terms of test context we will do that again here but i did use it here the whole and sole purpose of using that scenario object is if you can notice as when i do s dot it has some specific methods okay and these specific there are specific methods and i can tell you what those methods are maybe in a minute but right now there is a method which i am interested in particular is write so if you remember i was talking about that how i would like to introduce a way by which i could enter some customized logs some logs which i would like uh, my reports to display some specific logs 
uh, for that purpose i would like to use this write object write method so write method is in, in cucumber is a method which writes logs inside your cucumber reports right and the way to achieve this is using cucumber native dependency injection okay so this scenario is an interface which is defined in cucumber and if you notice its description here so it's saying it can only be used inside before and after hooks as a parameter and it allows writing text embedding media into reports as well as inspecting results so it has primarily three purpose I, either it can be used for writing of the text so scenario dot write is what i'm using here it can be used for embedding media into reports and embedding media in this case for what's relevant for us is uh, is the screenshots so we can attach screenshots to our reports using this uh, scenario interface and we can also inspect results so when the scenario gets executed whether that scenario is passed or that scenario is fail if i want to fetch that at runtime i'm going to use this object we're going to see the implementation of it how high how i'm going to validate or how how i'm going to know or which method i'm going to use to know whether a scenario is pass or fail and but and in what context so we'll understand that later in the today's video itself so for now uh, the right implementation of it is i'm going to define the object at the top that is scenario i'm going to put a parameter here as scenario s inside the setter method which on which top of which we have at the rate before you cannot just key do this anywhere okay you it has to be done on a method which is annotated by at the rate before or at the rate after only in these two methods you can do this this is i'll i'll say again this is a native dependency injection concept of cucumber now what is dependency injection i have covered this many times i'll again do that because that is what we uh, we are going to implement in our framework later using pico container and all but for now what you have to understand by dependency injection is that when you execute this project what will happen at runtime a new object will be created by cucumber on its own so you are not initializing this scenario okay cucumber in itself is initializing it and after initialization it is injecting it here so this is called as injection it is injecting this object inside our such step devs it is injecting it here and once it injects you are actually capturing it in your scenario object so what you what cucumber injects here you are capturing here and once you capture it here you are free to use it across your step definition file okay and how will i use it let me show you the example of it so once this is injected i am using this dot scenario to capture it here and then i will start writing something for example i'll write here scenario dot write browser is closed okay because because when you see nothing is displayed here like browser is closed i would like my reports to say that browser is closed right these are customized messages which i want my uh, reports to display for any user who is going to see that report later right so here also for example here it's written i have browser open and url is navigated but i want to inform more about what happened during this test ex step execution so i'll write here scenario dot write right here chrome driver invoked and url navigated as i will perhaps will write the what url navigated this is also very relevant information when you see the report so i only see i have a browser open so i need to know what kind of browser was open and what url was navigated this is a this is the relevant information any report should have about what actually happened all right so i'll write this information here then perhaps here as well some information scenario dot write then in this case search was successful uh, search was successful something like that in this case it's not very relevant because that the size search for a product as this is already being printed here right so it's not very relevant but just for the 
proving the point i am just writing statement here and uh, i think that that is it i just want to tell you how it would look in the report so let me just run it again run as j unit test so execution completed now if i go again and check my report it should have more logs if i go and search it so if you notice i can see these logs here chrome driver invoke now you are navigated as this search was successful browser is closed right that is what i wrote in the after hook so this gives me good picture about what really happened compared to the report which i was which it was generating earlier so it is giving you good picture so that is the whole and sole purpose of writing more logs to a report so that when even if you look at look at it later you will realize what actually happened okay now there's one more thing which is missing here that is when someone sees this report he should be able to see the screenshots as well because that actually proves that your script ran successfully and what was the state of the application when the script was running by just reading these logs are sometimes not enough for the stakeholders or a ba or the requirement giver he need to know what exactly happened so screenshots as 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 you must have heard picture speaks the thousand word right so instead of reading something how about checking the reports right or so how are you checking the screenshot or the state of the application when the execution was happening right so we we'll, we are going to do implement that next and i am going to tell about how we are going to embed that screenshot inside the report so let's have a look at it now now for capturing the screenshot there is a specific condition and we also talk about the screenshot strategy like when to take it for now i am going to implement implement the screenshot capturing after the scenario now this is one of the um, uh, you can say strategy of screenshot capturing that is once the scenario gets executed you take a screenshot right this is one of the strategy which people take don't take screenshots on each step right so i can however choose to take screenshot after each step and sometimes this is also healthy uh, when 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 you know you're working in a very very volatile situation or a volatile project where or maybe client is required client is asking you to generate reports for each step right so as to give you a, so so as to generate a live documentation of each step like when you execute something what has happened when you execute next step what really happened in the application sometimes people want this kind of documentation that is if you have to implement something of that sort you can implement that using cucumber so i'm going to talk about all these strategies right now we're going to use it after in the after hook so what after hook does after each execution of the scenario it will take a screenshot irrespective of it is pass or fail so no matter what whether it's a pass or fail it will execute the after and it will capture the screenshot for you so let me do that so before i do a driver dot quit i would like to take a screenshot because once driver is quit you can't do it so for taking the screenshot we have in selenium a specific interface and it's called as takes screen shot okay screenshot i'll create the object for it and and now this is a special kind of uh, interface which you have to cast in your driver so you have to cast your driver which is available here which is already been initialized inside this step so you have to cast this to this interface and once you do this you get a object which has a specific method called as get screenshot as right once you get this you call this method and inside this you type output output type dot and then you it gives you three options right so one is base 64 second is bytes third is file if you want to save uh, the screenshot in a file format for example you want to save it in your disk right in that case you are going to select the file and after doing that you need to of course convert it into two three there are few more steps involved and then you can actually save it inside your hard disk 
if you want a byte format byte array format bytes format then you're going to select this bytes if you want to have a base 64 format of it it will select the you have to set the base 64 so base 64 is if you are not aware of it base 64 is a way by which you can convert anything or our image into a string format so if you notice it gives it as a string so it's a series of strings everything will be converted to a base 64 format and you can embed that inside your html file right? it's used for that purpose right now i will not use base 64 or file i will use bytes why i'm going to use bytes i'm going to talk about it so once i do this sorry dot bytes and i need to save it here So now I have, so after this step, screenshot get screenshot as, it will take the screenshot, the whole window of the browser, and it will convert that into the bytes array format, byte format, okay? Now, why I choose to use this byte is because now I would like to embed this, isn't it? So for embedding purpose, I'm going to use the scenario object. This is what we discussed last time, that it is used for three main purposes. Finding the status of the scenario. Uh, uh, second is uh, writing the logs and third is embedding media. In this case, our media is an image, right? So we're going to use scenario dot embed. And since in embed, the default format is byte array, right? And that's the reason I chose this output dot bytes. So I'll use this. And here I'm going to pass the data and here I have to mention what kind of resource this is. So I need to say this is data of type image PNG. And this is it. That's how you implement the screenshot capturing mechanism in Cucumber. Okay. Now if I go and run this, JUnit test. Now let's see what happens. So my report is this. This was my previous report. If I enter, I am seeing a screenshot being captured and attached here. Okay. So product list should appear pertaining to the product search as this, and then it has attached the screenshot. All right. So that's it. That is how basically you implement screenshot capturing. Now I can talk about more on this in terms of what can be captured using this screenshot so screenshot if i'm casting a driver it will take the screenshot of the complete html com uh, aspect of the chrome browser so it's not capturing the whole chrome window it's only capturing which was implemented as an html so whatever html uh, reflection of that uh, pages it will only print that but if i want to take a screenshot of a specific element that also i can do using the same text screenshot maybe i'll demonstrate that as well but to do that i would need a specific thing which is my elements are now defined inside the page object model files right so i need to pass this scenario object inside my common page objects or search text box all right so let me do let me show you how to do that it's not very complex what i'll do I have this page object. So let's say I want to, or maybe in this case, I want to uh, uh, take a screenshot of search text box, right? So text box, which you have here, like I only, I didn't want all that. I only wanted a text box of a specific element, not the complete page. So what I can do is I can actually do this. So I can write takes screen shot screenshot maybe the same and here i can actually write the element so now this is casted to an element and if i want to take a screenshot of this element i can well be able to do that let me just copy paste from previous step so it will be something like this right now the only problem which i have here is 
that I don't have a way to embed this because in this class scenario object is not there. So what I have to do, I have to pass this create, uh, sorry. So creation of injection of this scenario object is happening inside my step dev. So this is where it's being injected. I cannot really inject it inside my common page object. But what I can do is, is I can pass this object from here to here. How? It's quite easy to do. S C E N A R A I O and I will design, I will define a scenario object here, scenario interface here. And I will so see if once this is being initialized, a driver is being passed here. So how about is um, along with passing the driver, I also add it here. Right? So this time what will happen? Driver will be passed and scenario object will also be passed when I initialize this common page objects. All right. All right. So now I have to pass two objects to this uh, page object model file while initializing it. So let me go back here. So right now when, when I'm initializing it, I'm on, only passing driver. So now instead of drive passing driver, I'll also pass the scenario object. Right. So this is how a scenario object can be passed inside the page object model file and from where you can actually capture the screenshot as well as embed that. So now if I run this, let's see what will happen. Run as J unit test. Oops, it failed. Let me see where. Oh yeah, it failed because I have passed this object, but I have I'm not assigning this object to this. So I have to do this dot SCN is equal to S as well. This also I need to do. Only then this will become accessible here. Okay, so if I run this again, run as Now it's passed. So if I go and see the screenshot now, port now, so you see it is actually printing the elements. Why do you see this is because, because uh, you see this, it's only printing this, this section, right? Let me make it more, uh, let me cut this and let me print it after this so that you actually see what's there. Run as J unit test. Close. Let's see the report. You see that this is the text box. It only captured that specific element screenshot so that also can be done using this text screenshots it doesn't mean that you only take you can only take uh, the whole window screenshot you can also choose to take the specific element screenshot right now uh, so in my practice what when uh, what i have uh, uh, practiced so far uh, is uh, i hardly took any element specific screenshots i only go and take a complete screenshot because that gives you a complete view of what was the state of the application it kept it has everything right so it's always good practice to capture a full screenshot rather than capturing a small element level of screenshots uh, so in, in general in uh, practical and this is not usually uh, is implemented like screen uh, element level screenshots okay so let me for now uh, keep it as it is and uh, we'll talk about one more screenshot strategy that is if you want to take screenshots after each step okay so since we are talking about screenshots let me tell you a few more strategies this is this was a strategy which was which we implemented for capturing after scenario is executed now let's talk about if you want to capture it after each step okay after each step so to do that in cucumber we have one more 
level of hooks that is called as before and after line okay so let me create a public void setup after each line something like this and here i would write at the rate before line oh not uh, not before line sorry before step or after step actually in this case i want to capture it after step after step so after each step this method will get executed and uh, i am going to write this style line from i'll cut it from here and put it here okay so this can also be implemented uh, for if you want to capture it after each step okay so let me show you that run as j unit test so execution done now if i go and search for it so if you can notice that i have opened browser open it has captured screenshot and attached when i search for product as dell this caps captured again a screenshot is captured and then another screenshot captured so what is the significance of this so the significance of this is that it is capturing the screenshot after each step the state of the application is what you can see it's live documentation of what really happened and this sometimes becomes very useful for the uat uh, people user acceptance testing because they want to know how the application is behaving for a specific scenario this is very useful for the manual testers very useful for the for giving demonstrations and the telling or uh, generating a live documentation of uh, of your test cases right so this is very so uh, very very sometimes it's very very crucial for specific projects to generate these kind of reports or adopting these kind of screenshot strategies so you see you don't have to really read what really happened you can all all you can do is scroll down so the application was this then something was entered here and then when you entered and it, when you clicked on enter it shows the result right so it's a good documentation um, good scenario documentation in our case right this is the second strategy screenshot strategy capturing after each step now a third kind of strategy can be you only take screenshot if something fails right so you will only capture it when something fails so how you can uh, achieve it that i will tell now next so i will remove this line from here or let me just comment it out okay let me comment this piece here and uh, what i will do is i will write something here so inside this so since the scenario object scenario interface can be injected in the before hook it can also be injected in the after hook so i am going to inject it in the after hook now scenario s so when i do this s dot all right when i do this s dot i have an option okay so if i do s dot i get two methods called as is failed or get status right so when i do is fail it returns me true or false if the scenario is pass it will send it will say true if it is fail it will say fail or it will say false so i can choose to write something like this so if that is if scenario is failed in that case capture the screenshot if s dot fail is coming as true then take the screenshot else don't take the screenshot right so this is a strategy which i can implement when uh, i need to adopt a strategy that is take screenshot only when something fails otherwise don't take a screenshot so this is how i am reducing the burden of my on my reports and this only be is being used where there is no much focus on generating logs for audit purposes or you don't have to generate live documentation or to demonstrate someone or to sometimes in projects people have to keep records for longer period so it also because if you take more screenshots it will have to uh, you will have to have more uh, disk space right sometimes people lack that so for you it's really up to you to decide when to take screenshots but usually um in few number of projects you only take it when something is failed in my in my opinion you always take should take a screenshot after each scenario execution that is the standard approach which you can take 
but if you don't want to do it you can of course implement this kind of thing wherein if something is failed only then take a screenshot right so this is again is a different kind of strategy and i can choose to run it but there's no point because our scenario is test case is passing or maybe i can just give us demonstration maybe just to prove a point that it don't it will not take screenshot something is passed so this execution is done the scenario if scenario test cases if it is passed the screenshots will not be there in your report so you see there is no screenshot this time okay of course this is coming because i have written this inside here so it will anyway it's taking it and embedding it so maybe i will uh, remove this i don't need it so i will just remove this piece from here now or rather than removing let me comment it so that if someone wishes to do it later they will know how to do it okay let me just comment it out okay so what we did uh, in terms of this scenario capturing so in this specific session what we learned is i'll summarize what we did so we learned two new annotation one is before and we learned this annotation called as after step that is executed after and before each step so if i can choose i want to do something before every step i can choose to write at the red before step uh, then we also learned how will i pass this scenario object in my common page objects or to different classes which where i would need this the scenario object in itself is giving you three options this is an interface it's giving you three options to write logs A third second is to give you uh, mechanism to embed a screenshot and third is it can also check the you can also use it to check the pass and fail status of uh, the scenario which you which you just executed all right uh, and if you have uh, you must you might be confused about the statement which i made a phrase which i said that is dependency injection right so i would recommend you guys read about it because we are going to use it later so let me give you some good links here so dependency injection you, if you just go through any article it's not specific that you have to go to this site just go through three or four links here and read it once you read it, it becomes very very clear uh, what it is and the standard definition is dependency injection is a design pattern used to implement ioc ioc is inversion of control now this is a standard practice or you can say a design pattern wherein you don't initialize something you inject it right so class in itself itself is should not be responsible for creation of the object so if you also notice here uh, this scenario right this scenario i am using everywhere scenario dot embed scenario dot this scenario dot 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 that but i am not initializing it anywhere right and without initialization if you're trying to apply in a standard in a standard application if you have an object and you are doing applying a method on it and if you are not initializing it right it will give you null pointer exception right but in this case it's not giving you because the initialization part is being taken care by the framework the framework in this our case is cucumber so cucumber is at runtime generating this object creation initializing this object and injecting it so this is the way to inject this uh, object and this is called as native dependency injection because native means cucumber has it by itself you don't have to borrow us external library or uh, you know external library for achieving this dependency injection that is why i am calling it as calling it as native dependency injection now testng framework if you have uh, worked on testng testng framework also has this native dependency injection concept uh, so if you have heard of test context object or test context interface in testng you will find it there as well okay uh, or or maybe just maybe i can just show you uh, to set up some understanding on it so if you have, you have some idea about how about test ngs uh, i'll go to test ng documentation and it's very clearly written in test ng cost documentation as well if you have read it dependency injection right so here also you can read about it uh, however we are not using test ng anymore in this but uh, you can understand it that test, this dependency injection concept is so important for any any good framework that the test ng as well as cucumber both have implemented and implemented that uh, that concept it's very very important that you do that and you understand how dependency injection works because in any good framework it will 
have that implementation with it and you need to learn how to modify it understand it and how can you use it so that's why i'm insisting that you go and read about dependency injection it's not a very complicated concept to understand it could be a little bit counterintuitive in the beginning but once you read more about it you will understand it and anyway we are going to implement dependency injection in our framework as well right so one is native dependency injection this, this these are the objects which are available in test ng i test context xml test method object i test result uh, these are native dependency injection or native dependency injection method or, uh, interfaces available in test ng but in cucumber we have only one which is scenario so scenario is the only interface which is available in the cucumber for dependency injection uh, implementation all right so uh, i am going to call off this session and maybe in the next session i will talk about extend report implementation